Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas here and welcome back to my channel. So I've got a very special guest with me, Tegan. And today we're going to be doing some alcohol ink arts on these really cool black boards. So I'm going to let Tegan introduce herself. Hi, so I'm Tegan. I'm a Brisbane artist and teacher. And today I'm going to be showing you how to create something stunning like this piece on black uh, aluminium board. Um, and just showing you some different techniques. Uh, and I teach various workshops throughout Brisbane. Um, yeah, so I hope you yeah. enjoy. And how can they find you? So what's your Instagram? Um, so I'm on Instagram as Tegan Watts Artist and also on Facebook. And I have a website as well, which is TeganWattsArtist.com. So we're going to get started. So I hope you guys stay tuned for this really cool tutorial. Okay, so what we're going to be doing today is I'm mainly going to be using the Jacquard Pinata um, Blanco Blanco, which is the white. Um, but the trick with this is you don't want to mix it with alcohol because if you do, it's going to curdle and go gross. Um, so you're going to be using, uh, it's called Blending Solution or Extender. There's some different brands. So I'm going to be using that to mix with the white. Um, I'm going to lay down some white and then I'm going to introduce some colors over the top. Perfect. So what are a few safety tips when you do work with alcohol inks? So speaking of safety, <laughs> um, so I've got some gloves that I'm going to be wearing. Um, also you need to be in a well ventilated area um, because you can be using the isopropyl alcohol um, so it can get quite fumey. Uh, also if you're sensitive to fumes you might want to get yourself a mask. Um, but yeah, definitely work in a well ventilated area. What you get from office works or other supplies is a compressed air um, can. So to do the technique that I'm going to be showing you today to create flowers, I use this. Um, however, I'll show you, you can create similar effects using a straw as well. All right. So I'm just going to mix myself up some of the white and I'm going to put in some of the extender. And do you find that you can mix different brands together? Like it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I have only really used the white, the Jacquard white, um, which is amazing. Um, but in terms of the colors I'm going to be using today, I'm using three or four different brands. So yeah. there's no issue with mixing different brands of alcoholics. All right, so I'm going to just drop some on and then I'm going to have my compressed air ready. Whoop. And then I'm just spraying it to create a petal. Oh, that's so easy with the compressed yeah. air. Yeah. Um, so I'll lay down another bit here. And you can see as you layer it, you're going to get different depths of white um, and also depending on how much you dilute the white so to show you the difference if I drop the white on with no extender so I've put some down there let's have a look at the difference so it's a lot more opaque and yeah. it doesn't spread as far yeah that's right so you'll probably end up using a lot more if you don't dilute it yeah um, and I like diluting because then you get more transparent layers mm. so I'm just mixing up some more and that is one thing actually to note that sometimes if you tip these too far they can have um, like I don't know, liquid come out but the good thing with working on these aluminium boards is we can actually clean off mistakes with alcohol. So I don't actually mind that. I'm going to leave that for now. Um, but if there are areas you don't like, you just grab yourself some paper towel and some isopropyl alcohol or metho and you can just clean that area off. And because you're layering them too, you're probably not going to see it once yeah. you start doing your layers. 
but yeah definitely with the compressed air that's probably a safety thing too try not to tip it up too high so I might actually stand up for some of these um, because it's a compressed product it can yeah play up if you tip it too far have you ever used a uh, airbrush gun? Uh, I had a little mini compressor um, which was awesome but it was just a cheap one and I didn't find it was powerful strong, enough yeah. yeah but I definitely want to invest in like a stronger one okay so I'm just gonna go over that bit let's see Whoop. there we go and you know you're kind of better off just leave like letting it go and getting some more organic shapes rather than trying to control it too much well, it's kind of like with resin where it's got a mind of its own, so you've that's got to right. work with it. Yeah, so if you are someone that's like very, uh, what do you call it, like a control freak, yeah. <laughs> um, you might find it a bit trickier, but um, yeah, if you just kind of go with it, that's when I find you get the best results. Okay, now there are different ways that you can start with colours first, so I might show you on another one. Um, there we go. I like to start with the white and then build colour over the top, but I'll show you the difference if you do it the other way. Okay. So now I'm going to get, um, what colour will I start with? I might start with a blue. Um, so this one's Paper Mill uh, Winter Lake. This one you can get from Riot Art Stores. Um, and I'm just going to do a similar thing, laying it over the white. So if you just have your ink and your compressed air ready, and I'll show you also with the straw the different effect you get. So I'm just gonna drop, whoop, I'm shaky. There we go. So That's pretty. beautiful. Now you run workshops, so I know you do the craft parlor on the Gold Coast and you also do the workshop hub in Manly. Yeah, yeah. Where else do you do your workshops? Um, so I also do workshops at the Plant Lounge in Nunda and also at um, Vend Marketplace at Virginia, which I also have a little store there. Ah, oh, perfect. Vend Marketplace looks amazing. Yeah, so there's like 90 different small businesses in there. Um, it's on Sandgate Road, and yeah, there's regular workshops with different artists in there, so it's really good to check out. Okay, now I'm going to show you with the beautiful gold. Oh, how good is that? Um, and you might have noticed I didn't actually add any extender to that so you can play around but if you can see you're starting to get these beautiful layers um, where and because the gold is more opaque you can even just use the gold and your flowers will stand out yeah you can really see like the depth yeah such amazing technique and I'll show you too with the straw so I like to use stainless steel straws so that you're not throwing plastic ones out all the time. But if I use a straw instead, okay. So you can get a similar effect. Um, you can probably even be a little bit more controlled with a straw. So I tend to use this maybe for smaller petals or when you're, if you want to create the, um, what do they call it in the middle, the little filaments or stamen is it oh i know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about yeah. so you might want to do it for areas like that where you want a little bit more control but already i'm loving that i'm going to leave that for a little bit um so let's try another color i might bring in a oh one of my absolute favorites um so this is ranger ink this is eggplant which is I adore this color. Did you use this one much? Um, I've never used the eggplant one before, but it looks awesome. So um, if you're into your alcohol inks, this one, if you're using it on white and you dilute it with alcohol, you get probably about four different colors just from the eggplant. Um, so let's pop some on this other flower and whoop, see what we get. Stunning. Yeah. So it's kind of just staying purple, but if you um, yeah, dilute it with alcohol, you get pinks and blues and stuff come through. Um, the other thing you can do, if you want to layer more white over the top, you can do that as well. So if I come back over, either um, full strength or diluted, oh, 
and then you will get pastels because the white is going to pick up the colors that are underneath. What are we thinking? What other colour should we bring into that one? Um, do you have any like softy colours? I've got a real soft, this one here, oh, tea rose. Cool. So, oh, and I love Copic colours as well. So this one's tea rose. Let's see how we go with that. And again, it's just all kind of trial and error. Um, oh, look at that. So the good thing is, as I mentioned, if you don't like it, you can always rub it out and start again. But um, I just love the layering that you get. And you'll notice where you put the alcohol inks, it actually kind of removes a little bit of the inks underneath. So you get a little bit of black coming through. Uh, so what other workshops do you teach? So I do a variety of workshops. So this one is my alcohol inks on black aluminium. Um, I also teach probably one of my most popular classes is the alcohol inks planter workshop. So using alcohol inks on ceramic pots. Um, and I also do a really fantastic one, which is a mixed media masterpiece class where we work on a white aluminium board, which is uh, framed on timber and we use a variety of materials, it's awesome. Yeah. So it's the one that we have currently in the backdrop. Yeah, and they're 60, up to 60 by 60 centimeters, so a real statement piece for your home. And I found like alcohol inks is great for beginner level up to like your intermediate because you don't need to have any previous experience when you do come to one of your workshops. Yeah, exactly. So I have people who have never, you know, had any kind of art artistic background and they you know have a great time and I also have people who have been up to five of my classes yeah. and are still learning as they go um, so yeah it's a great medium to just you know either start out or to build your skills as yeah. well that's a great thing about like your abstract art is that as long as you're happy with it that's all that matters like yeah you, know, you can just really have fun with it and that's what's great about the workshops is it's always like such a fun friendly environment um, and in your workshops you supply everything so no one has to worry about bringing yeah. anything along. Yep, and I also seal the pieces because with um, alcohol inks they um, are not completely light fast so I actually seal using professional grade products uh, with varnish and UV resistant spray to protect mm. them. Um, yeah, so it's really beneficial like to come along and do a hands-on workshop because you're not having to fork out any money, you know, to buy all the supplies yourself. You can kind of get a taste of it before you go full in and get everything. And Yeah, definitely. And you get that, like, the demo plus the hands-on practice while you're there. So you can kind of problem solve and... Yeah, and if you're someone that maybe has some supplies at home and you come to a workshop, you know, you're more than welcome to bring some of the, the materials that you have. Um, and that can be good too, like, because you bought these expensive materials and you might know how to use them. So that's good. another option as well. So. Okay, so now you've just cleaned up the area again so you can start fresh. Yeah, so you can see up here I've been able to remove that flower, um, which, as I mentioned, is the great thing about working on these boards. Um, so I'm thinking I might start another one again here. So I'm going to mix up some more of my white with my extender. And the other thing you can do is once this is dry or sealed, you can also use your um, Posca pens, those paint pens, and you can draw over the top as well. Yeah, they can do some really cool patterns and more details into it. Yeah, so you can get, uh, you know, metallic gold and silver and white looks really amazing as well. So if you wanted to bring in some patterns or, you know, draw in some of the, the detail in the middle of the flower, that can be really awesome as well. Just add another element to it. So as you can see, you can never fully control exactly what you're going to get, but that's kind of the beauty of it. I like it because you're always going to get an original piece. Yeah, that's right. Like there'll never be another piece like this. Okay, so I might do a similar one to this because I really like that. So I'm bringing in some blue. 
and that's probably something I'd suggest too if you're starting off with inks is just like stick to a simpler color palette um, rather than trying to do too many colors. I find um, Pinterest is really helpful because you can look at what everyone else has used when you look up that medium yeah. and you can kind of try to color match to that. Yeah, so the other thing that you can do is you can create beautiful pieces just using a simple color scheme. So you could just use all blues or all greens and because you've got different brands and different shades that can be really effective as well. And there's so many brands out there now, so you can really get whatever colour you want. Yeah. So if you are trying to match like the colour scheme in your house, um, there are so many colours out there. So it is like you're not kind of having to stick to the primaries. Definitely. Okay, so that one's coming along. Um, this one I'm going to do a little bit more to. I might actually bring some white over the top. And these um, compressed air tins can be a little bit temperamental. So if you're using them consistently for a long period of time, sometimes they can um, act up. Yeah, so you just got to be careful with that. Um, or you can just do the safe route and just use a straw. So I've laid the colour down first. And then just while it's wet, I'm just popping some white on. Oh, that's beautiful pastel Yeah, blue. I'm thinking I might need to mix up the white with a bit of blending fluid, but you get a different effect again. Where did my blending fluid go here? Okay, so. How did you get into this form of artwork? I was teaching mixed media classes and I like I've always loved inks and I was using more water-based inks and I think I was just I don't know, looking for different materials and came across alcohol inks and yeah once I started playing I was like oh my goodness they were like nothing I'd used before So you can see with that one there, you're getting a much different effect compared to using pure mm. white first and then building over the top. Um, the other thing you can do is you can mix up white with your colors and drop them down so you can just have your pastel colors and work that way. So there's lots of uh, variables you can play with. Oh, how good is that? That looks beautiful. All right, so I'm thinking, yeah, maybe another yeah. one here. And then, um, yeah, then I might bring in a few other touches. And I mean, I could play with this for hours, but. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, this piece has really evolved. Um, and this flower here, I kept working and working on it. So it's changed and now it's like three flowers. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can see that you can just work over and over and like this flower down here, we've got a lot of depth happening now. Um, but if you get to a stage where there's parts you don't like, remember, you can wipe them off with alcohol. Um, I've also just used the gold ink and just add some, added some little dots there just for a bit of an abstract feel. Um, and once it's sprayed, I might decide to do some little fine liner details with some Posca pens, but probably not. Uh, so in terms of sealing them, uh, this is the varnish that I recommend. So this is um, the Krylon Kmar varnish. It's a professional grade sealant and you want to give at least one full coat once these inks are dry. Uh, and then... How long does it take for the inks to dry? Uh, I think like where, here where I've been doing things that are quite thick, I would be leaving that I reckon for at least half an hour or more. Um, with your thin layers like that we were doing earlier like that would definitely be dry but when you're using the white and the gold like I can see here it's still wet so I'd probably leave it for a while um, and then with the varnish ideally if you can spray it and then leave it you know overnight would be ideal or otherwise leave it for at least an hour uh, and then to protect it from UV light this is the UV resistant spray that I recommend. So there's matte and gloss. Um, this is, yeah, so this is the gloss one, which I prefer. It's still not super glossy, um, 
but it will seal your artwork, protect it from UV light, but still hang it somewhere where it's not going to be in full sunlight. And then the other great thing is that if you knew how to use resin, you could imagine a clear coat of resin on these would like really make them pop. Hey everyone, so thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. If you enjoyed this, which I hope you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget to follow Tegan on all of her social medias. Yep, so I'm on Instagram as Tegan What's Artist. It's T-E-A-G-A-N. Uh, also on Facebook or on TeganWhatsArtist.com. And I have lots of workshops coming up in the new year. So yeah, make sure you give me a follow. Yes, definitely. Um, these artworks turned out so well. I can't wait to show you everyone. So we'll be showing you in a few seconds. But yeah, please do give it a big thumbs up. Comment if this is something that you'll try at home. And if you're new to my channel, please do subscribe as I love to do a lot more art and DIY projects. So thank you guys so much for watching.